Calls and demands for mental health support are seemingly everywhere these days. In the three years following the COVID-19 pandemic, nearly every corner of the world has seen a staunch rise in mental health issues. But while everyone is likely to have faced a mental health problem of some kind in the past few years, research shows that marginalized communities, namely the LGBTQ community, are much more likely to be impacted by poor mental health in 2023. And unlike what many who spout anti-LGBTQ rhetoric claim, such disparate rates of poor mental health aren't inherently due to their sexual orientation or gender identities, but rather how they are treated by the rest of society because of their deviance from what is considered normal, with such treatment including no less than discrimination, violence and harassment, and harmful practices or policies, all of which have risen dramatically in recent years. So even though acceptance of the community may be improving within social spheres, systemically, this just isn't the case. And so long as such oppression persists, LGBTQ individuals will continue to face worse mental health outcomes compared to their peers. This is important for employees to keep in mind because when individuals are constantly under threat with no clear supports to turn to, this can cause them to develop unhealthy coping mechanisms as a way to survive and protect themselves from harm, namely by hiding who they are, putting up walls at work, and refusing to seek or accept help even when it's needed. In fact, current research suggests that over half of the LGBTQ individuals do not disclose their identities at work, while a whopping 77% of trans and non-binary individuals go so far as to delay their transition as a means of avoiding mistreatment at work. That said, in order to support LGBTQ individuals' mental health in the workplace, employers must be willing to move away from reactionary methods of support to instead adopt a more proactive approach. So how can employers adopt an effectual, proactive strategy to safeguard their LGBTQ employees' well-being? There are two key components that employers should focus on when it comes to showing support for the LGBTQ community, benefits and culture. One of the biggest flaws common throughout almost every workplace DEI initiative is short-sightedness, focusing on surface-level changes like satisfying diversity quotas rather than addressing the underlying systemic issues that perpetuate inequities in the workplace. To rectify this, many community advocates underscore the role that benefits play in alleviating long-standing barriers that continue to disadvantage the community and perpetuate mental health disparities. This includes a lack of social support, houselessness and poverty, and a lack of access to quality care still experienced by a majority of LGBTQ individuals today. To remove or lessen the impact of such stressors, employers must adjust their benefits offerings to include access to culturally competent care, inclusive benefits, stipends for personal and professional development, employee resource groups, and supportive restroom, dress code, and documentation policies. And once these more tangible forms of support are in place to safeguard LGBTQ employees' well-being, employers can then shift their focus to the more immaterial aspects of the workplace, that is, workplace culture. This is once again an area in which otherwise good intentions can fall short if not carried out by substantial and meticulous action. In order to cultivate a truly inclusive and psychologically safe workplace culture, there are three main components that employers need to prioritize. Advocacy, awareness, and agency. This includes making sure that one's workplace touts anti-discrimination and harassment policies that explicitly protect LGBTQ workers, hosting routine trainings aimed at raising employees' awareness of unconscious bias, stigma, and other relevant topics, and most importantly, ensuring that LGBTQ workers can express their authentic selves in the workplace. While great strides have been made over the last few decades, allowing the community to celebrate their authentic selves and to feel celebrated at work, current insights into the community's overall well-being indicate that we still have much further to go. As the community takes on historic and deeply rooted systems of oppression, so-called band-aid solutions are not going to cut it. But with that said, employers can be rest assured they don't need to go back to square one when it comes to promoting an accepting and inclusive workplace, but rather, use what they're doing now as momentum to go even further. 